Hello, everyone. Welcome to this edition of the Africa Share and Discuss webinar series. So exciting to have you join us again. Um, we'll just allow for a few minutes, about a minute or thereabout, for everyone joining to settle in, and we will be on our way. We have an exciting conversation today, and I can't wait to dive right into it. So while we are waiting for everyone who has connected now to settle in, please feel free. Of course, we always love to know where you're joining from. Please feel free to write where you're joining from, the subject you teach, and perhaps anything interesting about your country. Where you're joining from, subject, of course, the country you're joining from, the subject to teach, and anything, how long you've been using FET. I think that would be a good, that would be, that would be something interesting to know. Okay. Welcome again, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, where, good day, wherever you're part of the world you're joining us from. It's so exciting to have you join us this September for this edition of the Africa Share and Discuss webinar series. We're always excited to bring this to you and we hope that you find the conversation and insight from today's session beneficial and something you can take directly to the classroom. Today's conversation promises to be exciting and without further ado, just going through our housekeeping Housekeeping information will we'll bring up our speaker and we'll be ready to go. The Africa Share and Discuss webinar series is, a pro is brought to you by the FET simulation project at the University of Colorado Boulder, Boulder that creates free interactive math and science simulation. The themes are based on extensive education research and engage students through intuitive game-like environments where students learn through exploration and discovery. The project was founded in 2002 by the Nobel laureate Carl Wyman. At the FET Interactive Project, our goal is to improve the global teaching of math and science education. And in line with this goal, one of the many F -F -F activities is the Share and Discuss webinar, where we meet every third Wednesday of the month and bringing seasoned education researchers or practitioners to share insights that they have learned from, of course, using technology and FET simulations in their classroom, sharing those insights and how that can translate into improved outcome and practices in the classroom. As you see on the screen, we meet every third Wednesday of the month, and that's the breakdown in terms of time based on the country you are joining us from. This webinar is recorded, and for those who can join um, live so that they can catch up on the recording on YouTube, and you can also visit YouTube searching for FET Interactive Scene to find the recording of this session and then all of the past meetings. So, of course, we encourage and invite you to share widely with your friends and anyone you think will benefit from this conversation. While the conversation is on, please note that we will not be taking questions. So we've allowed sufficient time towards the end to, to address questions. So while our speaker today is sharing, we will I encourage that you use the question and answer feature here in Zoom to drop in your questions. And after the presentation, we'll open up the room for questions where we treat all the questions. And if you would like to speak directly, we'll also open up the mic and allow you share. So wherever you're joining us from, please post in the chat and I will be looking out as well as with other members of the team. And finally, we have a community on Facebook. These conversations run really fast. It's almost impossible to capture or cover all that we would like to say. So we encourage and invite you to join the community on Facebook where you can connect with other Fetch users on the continent. You can, of course, interact, ask questions and get support should you need any. And most importantly, stay abreast of news and information as they become available. So without further ado, I have the pleasure of welcoming our very esteemed speaker today, none other than Esther Kiba. Esther is a seasoned educator um, from the Aga Khan University in Tanzania. And she recently 
conducted a, a systemic review of how to, to uh, how what what are the factors that affect the implementation of FET at scale. So today our conversation is going to stem around that. We're going to be discovering some of the things she's figured out and how that can definitely help us achieve amazing results in our classrooms. It's a pleasure to have you join us today, Esther. I'll hand the virtual mic over to you. Thank you, Sola. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Yeah, as Sora introduced me, I'm Dr. Esther Kipga from uh, the Aga Khan University Institute of Educational Development uh, from East Africa, and the, our campus is uh, based in Dar es Salaam, though we have uh, other campuses in Nairobi and Kampala. Uh, our, inst our institution, I uh, will give you some highlights from our institution because I know most of people when they hear about uh, Aga Khan, they mostly relate it with medical related uh, 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 staffs. But uh, the Aga Khan University is also offering uh, education uh, courses uh, and specifically for now, we are offering masters uh, of education in different at different levels of specializations, from ECD, uh, primary, uh, secondary, and tertiary levels. We decided to make it uh, level wise because we consider that uh, someone can excel within that particular level and grow uh, uh, like following his or her destiny. And now uh, on my side as an educator, my in, uh, research interests uh, mostly in STEM education, uh, uh, mostly technology and uh, some Times I also blend what I'm doing with gender and environment, which is now uh, like a cross-cutting cross -cutting issues uh, which are highly discussed in education. So I think let's go directly to my presentation. I will share my slides. Full my slides are visible to everyone. Definitely. See them okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh to start with, uh, let's reflect on this on this scenario. Um think of a small classroom. Uh, in any country in East Africa and consider that the teacher uh, teaching in any, teaching any STEM subject, whether uh, uh, physics, whether chemistry, biology, uh, mathematics, and some of those who are learning technology, and but theoretically, now I have considered one of the teachers being Mr. Amani, who is passionate but face some challenges, uh, how do you explain abstract ideas like the behaviors of uh, atoms and the law of motion with nothing but the chalk, blackboard, and few outdated resources? Uh, think of this scenario, then you can write what you, you think in the chat. I will give us uh, at least one minute to reflect and write. Then Sola will read some of the comments, then we will continue with the presentation.
So if it's okay, I'll, I'll just read out the the scenario again okay. so that, or do you mind? Okay, I can go, I can do that. Imagine a small okay. classroom in a rural school where somewhere in Africa, where access to modern science lab is a distant dream. The students are bright and eager to learn, but their understanding of complex STEM concepts is limited to what they can read in textbooks. Their teacher, Mr. Amani, is passionate but faces a challenge. How do you explain abstract ideas like the behavior of atoms or laws of motion with nothing but a chalkboard, with nothing but chalk, a blackboard, and a few outdated resources? So some of reactions and feedback that are coming in. Patrick Ajay says, the students are still going to have an abstract view of the concept, which will not let them appreciate such concepts. Today, we, I hope I get, I get to everyone, apologies, this is written in Arabic, so I'm, I cannot read Arabic yet. Today, we are training on education, now an applied digital skill in mathematics. Sorry, I, today we are training on educational and applied digital skill in mathematics. So please keep your thoughts coming. That those are the two we've gotten. So those are the two reactions we've gotten. Um, Okay, thank you, Sola. Maybe people will continue to uh, um, respond on the scenario, but uh, still let's continue to reflect. I think that Mr. Amani uh, like, uh, discovered this challenge and uh, uh, get the opportunity to attend the professional development program which introduced him to some of the uh, digital resources, including the use of fetish simulation. Now, and uh, fortunately, Mr. Amani is given a tablet uh, to use uh, for in his teaching uh, uh, practice at his school, at his uh, small classroom. Uh, think how uh, teaching and learning will change based on the use of technology despite of the challenge of having uh, uh, insufficient resources uh, for enhancing his teaching uh, process. Now, when you are commenting, also consider that, that Mr. Amani uh, went through a uh, professional development program which enhanced his uh, digital uh, ped uh, digital pedagogical competencies, especially on the use of uh, FET simulation. Uh, I think you can agree with me that uh, FET simulations are not the only only uh, instructional strategy or instructional resource that can be used to enhance teaching and learning process to both uh, students and teachers. There are some of the uh, of the strategies that teachers can use and uh, like complementing the use of the simulations. But we have seen that the simulations are making magic in our class in in our classroom. For those who have used first fit simulation, whether they experienced or novice, you can testify how they can uh, make the class live and interactive, or make learning interactive. Maybe Sola, you can read some some of you if there are uh, some additional. Uh, responses like two or three, then we can continue. Sure, definitely. Um, Murad El Kakri says they can bring simple objects from outside of the school to explain situations. Destination No C4 says as an educator, one needs to be very creative. Create your own experiments with 
what is available, make them at least see what is taught. Hi, John Paul. Abduliu, Abduli Ba says, this can be very challenging for the bright students to grasp the abstract concept. Simulation and digital integration will help the students to easily understand the concept. That's all for okay, now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, most of you, some of you have concurred with me that uh, it's it's not only simulations that can be used to enhance teaching and learning, though they are very helpful. And we have seen uh, simulations simplifying teaching and learning, especially when we, we have uh, minimal uh, resources in our uh, classrooms. And uh, one of you have commented on creativity. Of course, an educator, a teacher need to be creative. And these are the, among the, of the skills that are like transformed to the students and they should be acquired by the students. And this is what is required within the uh, ever-growing uh, uh, technological world. Um, so from the scenario, we can see uh, that there is the unique, uh, the, 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 we can see the unique uh, way how a FET simulation can transform uh, STEM learning and teaching uh, among both the teachers and the students. Uh, not only in physics, because as we know, FET simulations were initially made for physics uh, subjects. That's why they are called FET, physics education technologies. But now you can find simulations that are suitable to teach mathematics, and they can make learning of mathematics easier to grasp some concepts which could be difficult to uh, be understood by the students. Uh, from the story, we can see uh, that the teacher with the insufficient uh, uh, resources can like inconvenience his teaching process. But with uh, creativity and the use of available resources. And as I have said, uh, we imagine that the teacher went for professional development program and the teacher was given the tablet. With Even without uh, like uh, the overhead projector, the teacher can use the same, same tablet to share some experiments uh, like the movement of electrons. Now the students can see how uh, electrons move around the nuclear, and uh, you can see how the teacher uh, can simply explain different concepts in biology and uh, other science uh, concepts. So within this uh, session today, uh, as the session itself has stated, we are going to share some stories from our end as experienced educators and students, because I believe that we also have uh, students who have joined for the session. Uh, I want to hear stories from your end. I want to hear stories from your end, and uh, I wish to hear even from students, how have fed simulations enhanced uh, uh, acquisition of knowledge uh, from different concepts, science concepts and mathematics included. And then I will continue uh, sharing the findings uh, we obtained from our systematic review. Uh, giving some little introduction because I know most of you are expert and you have all experienced this. Uh, FET simulations 
were initially made with the focus of enhancing uh, interactive engagement in the class and make, making uh, a steering uh, or igniting students' curiosity and make, making them connect what they are learning with their everyday life and make the learning of te uh, learning and teaching of stem subjects uh, simpler and en enhancing acquisition of some uh, enough uh, knowledge from the simulations and making the teaching and learning of stem subjects being interactive and making students as the agents of uh, of their of, of change of their own learning because uh, what we emphasize uh, especially th for those of us who are implementing competence based curriculum we mostly emphasize that students should be put at the center of their own learning so we have seen that uh, fed simulations can help as uh, students we, under minimal supervision of the teachers like uh, interact through hands-on activities uh, and make learning uh, like live. Uh, here are some, uh, some of the importances of STEM uh, learning because we have seen how FET can uh, be helpful in STEM subjects, but also uh, STEM subjects are very important because they uh, like they cut across most of the profession and they are they can they can be like be like a bridge or stepping stone for most of the graduates towards their uh, professional and uh, career. Uh, trajectory. So uh, through the literature, we have seen that uh, uh, STEM subjects or learning of STEM uh, can enhance uh, critical outcome in both the subjects that they are, uh, they are making the STEM subjects, uh, like uh, STEM is making a gateway to different causes which uh, involve both biology, chemistry, and physics and mathematics. So the graduates uh, can take scholarship into different career which are related to uh, STEM subjects. And also we have seen that uh, STEM subjects enhance uh, both cognitive and non-cognitive uh, abil learners' abilities, and not only for learners, but also the teachers, because we believe that uh, learning uh, is a continu continuous process, that the teachers continuously learn, even from their learners, while uh, they uh, facilitate learning, but also learners continuously learn from what is facilitated by the teachers. So uh, uh, STEM subjects are very important because they, 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 are, they have uh, uh, shown to enhance uh, both cognitive and non-cognitive uh, abilities of most of the uh, learners. So these uh, STEM subjects are now considered to be underpinned as a global issue of concern. Uh, and also uh, the STEM subjects are considered to be crucial uh, for increasing the economy for most of the countries. And uh, the US statistics from labor uh, has shown that in near future, STEM occupations will grow up to 8%, uh, doubling the average of growth of all the occupations. So we can see how uh, STEM subjects are very important and uh, showing how there is the need of enhancing 
uh, competencies that uh, are taught within these subjects to be real and live and acquired by the learners. The way uh, FET simulations are designed, uh, they are open access, we can all access it from anywhere we are from the globe, and they are very flexible to be adapted uh, in any class, and they can ignite intuition of the learners under minimal supervision from the teachers. So FET simulations are considered to be a powerful pedagogical tool that can be used uh, in multiple ways because you can have one FET simulation and use it to enhance uh, the acquisition of competencies from different uh, uh, different topics or subtopics though these days we don't cons we don't prefer using the word topic and subtopic because we use mostly competencies so uh, FET simulation has been has been seen to be powerful a tool to enhance acquisition of different competencies from different uh, subjects Okay, let's again reflect on the factors that we have encountered uh, in implementing FET simulation in our educational context. We will again have one minute uh, to reflect and write into the chat uh, how maybe they have maybe they have uh, solved some challenges at your end and how they have been helpful uh, to you uh, and, and have improved your teaching and learning and, and learning of your students as an educator or as a student uh, tell us how uh, faith simulation has been helpful uh, to your learning process. One minute, then Sola will read some uh, of some of your comments. Then we will continue. We don't have any reactions yet, Esther. Okay. So two just came in. Um, okay. He, he okay. Really just said it brings to life abstract concept. And Prince Kaliza says, FET simulations has been helpful when I was learning environmental studies course. Okay. So we have two comments. Yes. Adenike just said, I still use it today to explain balancing of reactions to my students. It allows coordination and equity among the students. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we can continue. Uh, I wanted us to just reflect, but the main aim of this presentation is to share with you uh, the highlights from our review. Uh, this was a systematic review paper done with one of um, my colleagues from uh, Nigeria uh, called Oruakemi. I think some of you might be familiar uh, she might be familiar to some of you because she uh, has been facilitating some of the FET causes. And also, I think she once, or even it can be more than once, she has uh, been one of the presenters 
uh, in the monthly uh, FED presentations uh, within this webinar. So uh, she might be familiar to some of you. She is my colleague, and this uh, review we did it as the like the foundation to like uh, building foundation towards uh, the projects which we are planning to conduct uh, on the use of FET simulations. So we wanted to see how FET simulations can be effective or can be effectively used to enhance teaching and learning. And here are the two questions that guided our analysis. Uh, we interrogated uh, the effectiveness of FET simulations and the factors influencing the impact uh, of uh, FET simulation on students' engagement, conceptual understanding, and uh, retention in STEM concepts at scale. So here are some of the highlights from uh, our review. Uh, we, uh, from the analysis, we learned that FET simulations can improve learning outcome by enhancing learner acquisition of uh, uh, competencies, including the skills and knowledge, and change their attitude and uh, help retain them to retain these concepts uh, for a long time uh, because they have seen how uh, like uh, these abstract concepts can be uh, like integrated even there in their real life situations. So uh, first simulations have uh, Proved to improve the learning outcome, not only the performance, uh, uh, learner's performance, but also acquisition of other skills uh, in STEM subjects uh, have shown to improve uh, the change of attitude, learner's attitude on uh, retaining different concepts and also being retained within the uh, these subjects because like that uh, uptaking of the subjects can be one thing and being retained within the courses is another thing. And also FET simulation has uh, uh, proved uh, to be freely accessed and most of you can testify that you, you can freely access these simulations at your end. And uh, some of the simulations are already translated to different languages and you can now easily uh, facilitate them to your learners based on your context. And also considering how our economic, socioeconomic back, background varies. And also, uh, the ability of FET to be diversified into different subjects like physics, chemistry, uh, uh, biology, and mathematics has also been among of, uh, of the effect, uh, like among of the factors which uh, has shown how FET simulation is effective in uh enhancing teaching and learning because it demonstrates better conceptual understanding of different concepts and it has shown high level of students engagement and helps them to uh solve different problems uh at different levels of education uh on the second questions, we highlighted multiple of the factors, uh, but here are some or few of the factors that are included in my presentation. Uh, one of the factors is the instructional strategies that 
uh, is used when fetish simulation is, uh, is implemented in teaching and learning. The instructional strategies that are complementing the use of fetish simulation can also be one of the factors that influences uh, the use of fate in our teaching and learning. Especially from literature, we saw that uh, when guided inquiry is, uh, is used, uh, fate simulation can be more effective because uh, sometimes uh, fate simulation has shown to make sometimes lose, students lose their focus if they are not guided by the teachers. But if they are well guided by their teachers, uh, learning can occur. And also when collaborative uh, problem solving is used uh, as a strategy that enhance teaching and learning using FET. And also uh, when flipped classrooms are used. Uh, this has shown great uh, improvement of students' acquisition of uh, uh, knowledge from different concepts in STEM subjects. Uh, and also, uh, another factor that can um, be among the factors influencing the uh, implementation of faith. Uh, uh, simulation in our classroom is the learner's characteristics. We know that we have learners of different characteristics and uh, there are some learners with some special needs. Uh, there are some learners with different cognitive abilities and we know that learners learn with, we are with, like with different styles and uh, and this can underscore the potential for personalized and differentiated instructions once uh, fetish fet simulation is used. So if the learner's uh, characteristics are considered uh, well, well, the teaching and learning can be effective. And also implementation of uh, the implementation context. Uh, the implementation context matters because uh, we, we, our curriculum varies and uh, from literature we have discovered that, that uh, teachers are facing challenge to align the curriculum, the curriculum which is implemented with the the available fate simulations. Uh, maybe this is why some of them are neglecting using fate simulations. Uh, but also uh, our environment, we are facing different technological uh, uh, problems or uh, there are sometimes technological divide. Uh, some of our countries, uh, you cannot compare how the students in rural uh, areas and those in urban uh, uh, get opportunity to learn because the schools uh, has varied uh, different, like the, some of the schools are well furnished with uh, enough resources, but some of the schools uh, miss some resources. And uh, this inconvenience or inconveniences the implementation of faith. Uh, sometimes also uh, the teacher training programs that uh, are implemented from different countries. We have seen from literature that uh, in some of the teacher preparation programs, uh, stu uh, student teachers are not introduced to uh, programs like FET. Some of the students are still, uh, some of the uh, teacher educators are still implementing rote and lecturing method. So uh, this has also been seen as the factor that can influ influence or impact negatively the use of faith in our 
classrooms. Some other factors uh, like assessments, uh, most of educators feel like uh, how are they going to assess students uh, when FET simulations are used? But I can say that it's only maybe they are worried. It's just because of the uh, they have not yet gained enough knowledge on how to use FET because uh, FET simulation is having uh, different interfaces and, uh, uh, which can be used by the teachers uh, even themselves as students, they can uh, like assess their performance. For instance, when the student is balancing an equation, they can see if the equation is balanced or not. Uh, okay. So from the analysis we did, here are some of the implications for future research. Uh, uh, for future research, we propose that uh, research, researchers should continue to explore more on the on how effective uh, FET can be used in teaching and learning, especially by considering different instructional strategies that FET simulation can be blended uh, within the process of teaching and learning process. And also, as we have, we saw in our results, that learners' characteristics is one of the factors that can influence uh, uh, um, effective implementation of FET simulation in teaching uh, process. Now, uh, the researchers uh, can interrogate more to see how learners characteristics can be accommodated and make uh, FET simulations implemented effectively to improve uh, teachers' pedagogical practices and learners' uh, uh, and, and the learning outcome. Uh, studies like longitudinal studies can be done to dive deeper and see uh, different contexts uh, that uh, FET simulations is, uh, is, are implemented and see how uh, FET simulation can equitably and inclusively be used in teaching and learning. And also, we encourage educators to continue to explore more uh, on the use of FET simulation and how effective they can be uh, in teaching and learning process. And if possible, go for further professional development opportunities to enhance their skills uh, so that they can maximize uh, the impact of FET simulation in teaching and learning process. Uh, now, conclusively, uh, from the results, you can see that the review has provided a comprehensive uh, evidence regarding the transformative potential of FET simulation uh, in STEM education. Now, the findings has highlighted the sub extensive benefit of integrating FET simulation in uh, physics, in chemistry, biology, mathematics, and sometimes we have seen some uh, simulations in, envir in, in environmental education and climate. And uh, we have seen how numerous studies are demonstrating the improved learning outcome, uh, increased learners' engagement, and enhanced conceptual understanding across diverse disciplines, as I, have, as I have mentioned. So, therefore, reflecting on these, uh, on the implications of the uh, of this review, um, it's evident that fate simulations holds. Uh, uh, they can make magic in our teaching and learning process by 
promising democratizing uh, teaching and learning uh, of STEM subjects and enhancing uh, provision of high quality education, which will, uh, will foster uh, students appreciating and having a deep conceptual understanding uh, worldwide. So we are encouraged to continue exploring the FET simulations uh, and how the uh, FET simulations can be helpful to be integrated in the subjects or in disciplines that uh, the FET simulations are available. So uh, this slide mark the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your time. Now, Sola, uh, over to you. Thank you so much for the well-delivered presentation. There's so much to unpack from this, uh, but I'm conscious of our time. So I invite everyone to, of course, we have reactions or questions. This is the time to use the question and answer feature here on Zoom. Drop your questions there, your reactions, and I'll be happy to read them out and have our speaker today, Esther, respond to them um, within the time that we have left. So thank you once again for such an insightful presentation. Amazing insight into some of the challenges. I, I, I like um, how you reiterated the bit around um, the student as well, um, in terms of the differences and gaps that exist with um, the prior knowledge that students bring to the classroom and how to navigate all of that. Um, but um, one thing is clear. Um, we, we know that there's tremendous potential for FET sims. We know that with the right strategies, just like you said, if it's student-centered and if students are properly guided, there's immense potential. But for me, one of the things which is a real, which can be a challenge in many of the contexts we find on the continent, I feel strongly that, and which which you've not really emphasized here, and that's why I'm starting with this. Um, devices is one of the biggest challenges people put forward and say it's the barrier to to this um to to the use of this resource in their classroom. From your experience, how what recommendation do you have for educators or education ministries who are also on the call and be trying to support their teachers and skill? What steps can we start taking beyond devices to improve the effective use and achieve the outcomes that we have? Okay, thank you, Sola. Uh, you said the device, right? I hear that the, as it won't, if you speak, maybe more than five out of 10 teachers if if significantly more than that would often put in front um not having all students have devices or those are some of the ad ways usually the first challenge that comes forward but from your presentation you've identified other areas of opportunity to get significant value out of that from of course the student end from the teacher end not just the device end what advice do you think um what are the immediate first steps do you think we can take to start seeing results based on the existing context we have? In spite of the very access to devices. Yeah. Okay, from my experience and from the literature, I have seen that devices, um, like not the challenge, it's like the devices are no longer the challenge, but the competencies teachers are lacking the competency and like the skills the and the confidence of implementing stem uh the uh, fate simulations now the issue on the devices uh what i can advise my fellow educators students and the teachers is to use uh, to maximize the use of what they have, they already have. Uh, if it's the smartphone, you can effectively use the smartphone. You download uh, some of the simulations which you think will be useful 
for your uh, teaching and use them even offline when you are teaching using your your phone your smartphone and it can be helpful to help that uh, students grasp and attain the intended learning outcome so uh the teachers and should use what they already have uh this should not be the excuse uh of not uh, like not making uh, learning to occur, especially uh, learning of the abstract concept, which we have seen that it might be challenging if uh, we just teach our students theoretically. For instance, when I was taught, uh, and I think most of us, it's how we were taught, uh, you just see, you draw the, the electrons, uh, around the nuclear, but you don't know how are uh, the electrons, the protons moving around the nuclear. But just using the small device you have, your smartphone, you can you can enhance your students acquiring the knowledge related to what you want to teach them and make learning effective. So devices are. Uh, Although can, they can still be a challenge, but uh, this should not inconvenience our uh, facilitation of learning. And we are, we are told to be creative. We use the small resources you have to make learning to occur. Awesome. Thank you for such insightful, for that insightful response, devices are, are, are not as big a challenge as we have made them. Um, Patrick RJ is asking, thank you, Doctor, for the wonderful work done. I would like to find out whether your review also found information on the impact of school environment on FET implementation. Should I take that again? Yeah, yeah. I would like to find out whether your review found information on the impact on school environment on FET implementation. Does the environment of the school affect the implementation and what factors within the environment? Yeah, uh, if, if I go back to uh, the factors that uh, influence uh, the effective implementation of FET, Sorry, the cursor is no longer moving. Uh, you can see I have mentioned the contextual, about the contextual uh, challenges, the environment that the learners learn. Our, most of our countries and most of our schools, especially public schools, uh, have uh, almost alike, the environment is almost alike. Uh, the 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 like the infrastructures, we cannot say that the infrastructures are friendly to uh, learning of uh, especially science uh, subjects, which needs uh, students like to observe, to hands on, and like to practice. So, of course, uh, learning environment is one, or it is among of the challenges noted in literature that can uh, either positively impact uh, effective uh, implementation of faith in teaching and learning or negatively uh, impact when they, there is insufficient, especially when there's insufficient resources and when the infrastructures of a particular school are not well uh, uh, organized. So uh, the context or the environment also is one of the factor. Great. Thank you so much. Alfios Dube is asking, and I like this question, what are the limitations of using FETSIN? I don't know if you found anything from your review. Yeah. Uh, from our review, we found that uh, 
most of fate simulations, although fate simulations can be is avi can be available uh, in many languages, but they lack guides uh, which can guide both teachers and learners. Like, uh, uh, for instance, in our country, the teacher has the the uh, facilitation guide which helps him or her in delivering a particular content. So uh, fetch simulations miss uh, guides which link the simulations with the curriculum, which is implemented in a, a particular uh, country or a particular context, I can say. So, uh, yeah. This is also, uh, this is one of the limitation. And uh, uh, like the, the, the simulations are limited. They don't cover all the topics, like the uh, simulation, it's like not all the topics are having simulations that can be used to facilitate that particular topic. So this is another uh, limitation. So, uh, uh, few uh, few simulations with the, for for a particular discipline, and uh, the miss the that bit of missing the guides, which can guide both teachers and learners, can also be another uh, limitation. Awesome. Those are a few that I can remember. Awesome. Thank you so much. Just in response in response to that, um, I I would like to add. I'll say two things. Um, first off, we have things called the teacher guide that is available on the website. So if you're using the sim offline predominantly, you might be missing out on the additional resources that you'd find online. So I'd invite you to visit the website where you would find short videos for teachers who have accounts on the website. It's gated so because we don't expect students have access to that. So you can see a short this video description of how that works, as well as a document that explains that. Um, and we also, on the, on the flip side, we also invite you to contribute um, activities that you create so that teachers in country and everywhere else, there, there, there are tons of resources available online on the website. Um, unfortunately, that cannot be made available offline because for the lack of connectivity. So if you're predominantly offline, periodically visit the website and see what are the new things that you'd find it's new things become available and you'd find um other teacher tips and information that would enable you use that i hear significantly the bit about curriculum mapping where people can easily identify um what sim can teach um specific topics in the curriculum and i can i'll say that is something that we're looking at and we encourage you to like while you share those are things we can also start collectively working on to make available on the website for us as well as for teachers. So if there's if you've done some of those things, please get in touch and um, we'll be happy to see and hear what you have. Um, because of our time, um, I would I want to be sure of taking all the question. I see one from Angel. Um, Grace is saying the environment might affect because there isn't enough time, facilities, and appreciation of it at the onset also how to effectively use and manipulate the scene to affect the results so there's a lot about competence just like you mentioned as a factor um, teacher professional development to be able to ensure that we can effectively use these resources and use them in effective ways that would help, help us achieve the results that we need i'll take the final question um and before i take this i would say just like i said at the beginning the conversations are like the the time we have is almost too little to address the conversation at length. So if you're not in the group already on Facebook, um, I'll post in the chat in a bit, please consider joining so that we can continue to ask questions from other users on the continent. You can learn about what the activities and how people are using it and you can become um, abreast of also news and information as they become available. Thank you a lot, Dr. Esther, for joining us today. I'll take the last questions and we can end on that note. Thank you, Dr. Esther, for sharing. I agree with you. Ah, la 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 la. Based on your review, how can FET seems how can we make FET seems available to learners, especially in low resource settings? Are most teachers aware of such tools 
or are they mostly used in universities? I, I think uh, even some of you can testify that uh, fetch simulations are not only used in in, uh, in uh, at the university level. Rather, they are also used uh, from uh, ECD level. Uh, we have seen uh, uh, some of the teachers uh, teaching literacy, uh, their numeracy, uh, for using fetch simulations. So fetch simulations can can be used can be contextualized to any level that the teacher want to facilitate uh, learning and make learning to occur. So fetch simulations are viable and can be used at any level if the teacher is willing and uh, wish to have those competencies that can uh, uh, enable him or her use fate simulations at any level. Uh, for the, the other question on how uh, can we make uh, fate simulations available for the learners uh, from rural context, I think it's more or less similar as what I have said earlier that uh, the teachers can uh, first the simulations should be available to the teachers. The teachers themselves uh, should uh, download uh, the simulations, and I I think it it can be good if the simulations are used offline. So if you uh, when you have internet, you download the simulations, you have them uh, uh, on your phone or tablet. If uh, you have the laptop, then when you go to class, you can share them with your uh, students with the little available uh, resources that you have. Uh, because not all the uh, schools in rural areas are uh, having insufficient uh, learning resources. There are some uh, schools that are having enough resources and they can they can easily access uh, fed simulation, although most of the schools in rural areas are having similar challenges of having insufficient resources. So the teachers can take that initiative of having the simulations in their gadgets, uh, if it's a smartphone or tablet. For uh, our country, all the teachers from primary school uh, to tertiary level uh, were pro provided with the tablets. So all the teachers have the tablets. So if the teacher uh, has the some of the simulations in the tablet, they can be easily shared by uh, to their students. Uh, the tablets were offered to all teachers, regardless uh, in living in urban or rural. So mm -hmm. all the teachers has the tablets. Awesome. So what we need now is the uh, skills to use those tablets because some of them have uh, like we, there's another study we conducted with my my students we found that the teachers are not using the the tablets for teaching and learning purposes because they lack that confidence of using the tablets in teaching and learning process Thank you so much. Apologies, everyone. I think we've shot the time by four minutes, and this is not characteristic of us. Um, so um, while I don't promise, I will plan to give you your four minutes back um, if you join the next meeting. So um, on this note, I um, would like to draw the curtain today so we don't take any additional time. Thank you for joining today's conversation. Thank you, for Dr. Esther, for bringing such insightful findings from your research. Um, I invite you again to join the meeting and um, we we'll, we'll, we'll end it here. Thanks once again. Um, we'll see you next month where we'll bring you another conversation and another great speaker. Bye, everyone, for now. See you next month. Bye, Dr. Esther. Thank you, Shola. Yeah, have a good one. Okay.